Good morning, church, and to those joining us online, we welcome you to our week of prayer service. Good morning, Ma'am Jack. Good morning, Ma'am Marge. Today is indeed a blessing. Ma'am Jack, last week during the faculty meeting, we talked about our university's best practices. And one that stood out the most is our integration of faith and learning. As a university, we are intentional in making sure that we not only nurture the minds academically, but we also prioritize spiritual growth, revival, and reformation. Week of prayers are a delight, and this week's theme, Embrace Who Am I That God Cares, will be our uh, overarching theme. Mom Jack, from yesterday, what message stood out to you the most? Yesterday morning, we heard that we are born with a purpose. Every human was born to do something that will make a positive impact in the world. Before we were formed in the womb, God knew us. Before we were born, God set us apart. He appointed us as a prophet to the nations. Yesterday afternoon, Ma March, we were told that we are created to serve. Our fundamental duty is to serve God and humanity. Such service begins with knowing that we are created in the image and likeness of God, and we are representing Him. We cannot tell others about God when we do not know Him ourselves. Therefore, we have to pray that may God find us a servant in His vineyard. Indeed, the lessons we have heard and will continue to hear through God's vessel, Pastor Ken, Ken Roy Campbell, is something to truly look forward to. And to be ready to receive God's word this morning, we would like to kindly, gently remind everyone to refrain from using their gadgets and to please put them on silent mode. We also would like to invite everyone to drop your prayer requests and declarations on the bowls provided for you located at the lobby. To maintain the solemnity of our program, we request everyone to please remain seated during the appeal song. For those of you who would like further counsel from Pastor Campbell, we, he will be available at the Philippine International Church office at 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. in the morning, and again at 2 to 3 p.m. in the afternoon. This morning session will delve into the trials and tribulations we sometimes have to face during our journey. Aptly entitled, When Crisis Hits Hard, our key text for this session is found in Joel 1, verses 6 and 7, and I read from the NIV. A nation has divided my land, a mighty army without number. It has the teeth of a lion, the fangs of a lioness. It has laid waste my vines and ruined my fig trees. It has stripped off their bark and thrown it away, leaving their branches white. Brothers and sisters, as we focus on the Lord's message for us this Tuesday morning, I invite you to open your Bibles to Hebrews 10, 24 to 25. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near we believe that we jesus is coming soon so the more that we should gather all together like this one and encourage each other
prayer everyone so I would like to share to you a story of mine so with the same with all of you I have a top um, experience last semester I've been experiencing pain heartbreak and difficulty in my life but that's not the story that I would like to tell you this semester is also a tough and challenging experience for me so here's the story I am privileged to be a full load student last semester. At the same way, I have an ex unexpected uh, challenge in my life that led me to where I am right now. So I have a large amount of balance to pay at the end of the semester. So I really have to go and talk to people if I can be allowed to enroll for this semester amidst my outstanding balance. But because of the policy, of course, it's a no. So I prayed again, and I want to try to talk to them. So I prayed to God, Lord, if you will, touch the heart of those people so I will be allowed to be in Rome. And of course, it's a no again. And then a week passed, and it's already one week that classes uh, started. Then I continue to pray again, and my prayer goes like this, Lord, this is my plan. Let your will be done. If they will not allow me again, then I will, will look for a work or you have to pay for my balance. And then tomorrow comes, I talk to people, 
And they said that they really cannot decide on that because my balance is 40K or 40,000. At that time, I come to God again and I pray, Lord, I will look for work today. If it is your will, I will find one. And if not, you will really need to pay for that 40,000. To make the long story short, I didn't find any work that day because God paid it all. He uses people to bless me. I receive a message telling me to check my email and you know what? I saw the receipt. I saw literally the exact amount that I need. And God is so good. He is amazing. He is a God who hears and answers prayers in accordance with His will. I may be rejected for so many times, but the Lord said, My children, know my will and know that I have a plan for you. And that's the importance of prayer. Until now, the one who paid for my balance, I really don't know who that person is. But I praise God because God sent that person to bless me. God can reveal His power and promise. It says in Matthew 7 verse 7, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. That is why if you want to know the power of prayer, this week of prayer, I am inviting everyone to join us in our united prayer every 7 a.m. and 4 p.m. at the left side of the anteroom. Experience God's blessing and leading through prayer. And may God bless us all this week of prayer. God bless us all. Good morning, everyone. And happy week of prayer. Are you happy? For our seasons of prayer, our prayer focus is to seek comfort and strength from God when facing tragedy and difficult circumstances, trusting in His love and provision. Here's the flow of our prayer this morning. To begin with, the praise team will sing chorus, and after that, the congregation will be given two minutes for individual prayer or by partner. Lastly, I will conclude the prayer to reflect ways on how you serve God and others selflessly and seeking opportunities to use your gifts and talents for a greater good. And then the praise team will sing again to end the prayer time. To those who are able, please kneel.
dear God, Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh God, for once again the opportunity to serve you and listen to thy word this morning. Lord, this morning, please help us to seek comfort and strength from God in facing tragedy and difficulty circumstances. O oh Lord, trust in his um, love and provision. Thank you also, Lord, for being with us every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just when I need him, Jesus is near. Just when I Good morning, everyone. Before standing here, young people, I prayed to God. I prayed to God. And I prayed about this. I prayed about this. Look at me. One time I spoke to you, and I entitled my message, If I Were Your Father. Kung ako ang inyong ama, if I were your father, I want you to get the best out of our week of prayer. If I were your father, I want to open my heart to you. As I walk around, my heart actually is crying because I realize that many of you are not getting the best when we are inside the church. And I don't want this to continually going on as we are gathered in this place. If I were your father, my son, my daughter, please, when we enter this worship hall, this is the house of God. And I appeal not only to our students, even to our faculty and staff, that when we are gathered to worship God, please put away your cell phone. Please put away your cell phone. Mga anak, mga kapatid, there is time for everything. And when we are gathered inside the church, this is the time for Jesus. Let us give this one hour for Jesus. Pwede ba bang anak? Please turn to your seatmate. Turn to your partner, your seatmate. Sabihin mo sa kanya, let us give this time to Jesus. Say it. I hope and I pray, mga anak at mga kapatid, if I were your father, you will get the best out of today's worship. Please put away your gadgets. Put away your gadgets. I will be walking around, and I hope my heart will be crying anymore because what I want to see, every one of you, is attentive and trying to get the best out of God's message this morning. Peace be with you, and God bless you all.
Happy Tuesday, everyone. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Indeed, it is good to be in the presence of Almighty God. Because in God's presence, there is a fullness of joy. You and I have found ourselves at the place of worship where we can praise, where we can lift up the name of a high and holy God. And I'm delighted to be with you for the second day of this week of prayer. Embrace who am I that God cares. Let me say welcome to those who are online, those who have joined us online. Also a few of my Jamaican friends. Uh, welcome to you and welcome to the rest of viewers. All right, this morning, I would like to ask two simple questions. And uh, the first question I would like to ask because I want to give away two, two books. Is a, a, in fact, both are true and false. Both questions are true and false. Uh, the first one is, the three dimensions of stewardship are the master, the steward, and the estate. True or false? Yes, that hand there. Okay, is it true or is it false? True. Can you? No, I'm. <laughs> no, I, I would like to, for you. <laughs> no, I, I would like for you to take the book to that gentleman. Thank you. No, the book. This. Okay, not the mic, not the mic. Thank you very much. Amen? Amen, amen. My second question quickly, uh, true or false, the steward is God. True or false, the steward is God. Do I see a hand? Yes. False. Uh, can anybody tell me who is the steward? Us, right? Thank you very much. Let me present my book. Thank you. Can you put your hands together? Amen. I would like to give a book to somebody. This is your first, your first uh, since the week of prayer started. This is your first time, and you're here. I would like to give you a book. Just raise your hand. Your first session. First session. First session. Okay. So you have always been here. All right, thank you very much for being here. If you have your Bibles with you, I invite you to turn with me to the book of Joel. The book of Joel. And we will consider a few verses in Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, we will just consider, consider rather, a few verses, uh, beginning at verse 1. And I'm reading from the, the English Standard Version. You can follow in whatever version that you have. And my version says, Blow a trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness, there is spread upon the mountains a great and powerful people. There like has never been before, nor will be again after them, through the years of all generations. 
far divorced before them, and behind them a flame burns. The land is like the Garden of Eden before them, but behind them a desolate wilderness, and nothing escape them. Simple subject for the next few minutes. When crisis hits hard, when crisis hits hard, your eyes are closed and your heads are bowed. Our God and our Heavenly Father, one more time, we come before your presence. Nothing in our hands we bring but simply to the old rugged cross we cling. Lord, this morning I pray that your Holy Spirit will not just visit us, but that he will stay with us. We ask you as we have asked you yesterday, let not the sermon get in the way of the message, nor this preacher stand in the way of the cross. May you alone be lifted up, may you alone be praised. May the devil be horrified, for we ask in Jesus' name. When crisis hits hard, since the entrance of sin, humanity continues to face crisis. Whether it is political, financial, economical, educational, institutional, geographical, or spiritual, crisis or inevitable in a sinful world. Christ, whereas there are natural disasters such as typhoons, tsunamis, volcanoes, etc., a lot of crises humans face throughout their history are caused by human themselves. Sin has been the force behind the crisis we face in this world. As such crises have caused permanent separation between families, crisis has multiplied poverty and created needs. Crisis has overturned lives and created debts. It has destroyed properties and created famine. Crisis has promoted miscarriages and created barrenness. Crisis has opened the door of trials, miseries, and crucibles and created pain, sorrow, and heartaches. In this modern world, COVID-19, a crisis that have destroyed lives, dreams, hopes, and peace. It robbed the young, the old, and the elderly of the meaning of life. A crisis that many of us are still coming back from. But here in the book of Joel, the nation of Judah is faced with crisis caused by their enemies, a crisis that has eroded their livelihood and left them with another crisis on the way. However, the book of Joel is called a lament. A lament or psalms or other narratives that have a positive connotation. Lament almost always climaxes on a positive note with worshippers placing full confidence in God as their deliverer. There are three criteria to determine a lament. One it traditionally uses generalized or stylistic language 
Numerous images used for the same thing. Humans are likened to animals, whether in their attacks on God, people or their attitude towards God's people. For example, Psalms 57. Two laments generally, though not exclusively, are cries for God's deliverance from enemies. And the third one, laments, are liturgical responses to threat which a nation faces. We find these three criteria in the book of Joel. On the onset of this message, there are two points that I will share with you this morning. The first one, trust in God in the midst of crisis. The second, when God shows up in your crisis, he reverses your circumstance. Trust in God in the midst of crisis. In chapter 1 of the book of Joel, the enemies of Judah are likened to locusts, according to verse 4, and lions, verse 6. The chapter announces the crisis that Judah's enemies have caused. And in the same chapter, verses 6 and 7, we read, For a nation has come. I want you to read with me this morning because we're going to read uh, a few verses here. For a nation has up against my land, powerful and beyond number, its teeth are lions, teeth, and it has what? Fangs of lioness. It has laid waste my and splintered my fig tree. It has stripped off their bark and thrown it down. Their branches are made white. The fields are destroyed. The ground mourns because the grain is destroyed. The wine dries up. The oil languishes. A chapter 2 announces Judah's enemy who is coming to destroy and to put to shame the people of God. And in verses 2 to 4, the Bible reads in Joel chapter 2, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness there is spread upon the mountains. A great and powerful people, their like has never been before. Verse 3 says, fire devours before them and behind them a flame burns. The land is like the garden of Eden before them but behind them a desolate wilderness verse 4 says their appearance is like the appearance of horses and like war horses they run Judah has endured great losses to their livelihood their economic stability is destroyed by their enemies and now another coming crisis is on its way. Against these, this background, Joel tells us in chapter 2 verse 1, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. The first question that I have for you, my brothers, my sisters, students, staff, faculty, administrators, from the pulpit to the pew is, what do you do in the midst of crisis? What do you do when your problems seem to have no solution? What do you do when the school fees are due and the bank accounts are empty? 
What do you do when the relationship you have invested in, the relationship you thought would have been, uh, would have been a lifetime is coming to an end? What do you do? What do you do when your joys turn to emotional pains and your night of sleep becomes sleepless nights? What do you do when you are failing your courses even though you have worked long and hard? What do you do when the bills are piling up but the income is not that great to cover that which is piling up? What do you do in your crisis? When your crisis meet you in your face, when your crisis stand before you what do you do when the mountains are getting higher the valleys are getting wider in your life when the rivers of sorrows are overflowing and your boat is oh so small what do you do sometimes we feel like throwing the towel Sometimes we feel like give up on our dreams, give up on our hopes, give up on that which God has given to us. Sometimes we feel like let go. Sometimes we allow the emotional pains to speak instead of what is right for the situation. Sometimes the situation itself weighs us down and causes us to question even the very existence of God. We ask the question, where is God? Where is God in my situation? Have you ever asked that question before? But I'm here to tell you today that the solution is in Isaiah 55 verse 6 seek the Lord while he may be found called upon him while he is near in other words we are called to turn to God trust him wholeheartedly we are called to turn to him to seek him while he is found while he can be found and the truth is God can always be found God has never been lost we we are the ones who have been lost we are the ones who have been separated but thank God that through the blood of Jesus you and I can be connected to Almighty God in our time of crisis Verses 12, verse 12 tells us of chapter 2 of Joel In verse 13 also it says therefore also now say the Lord turn he even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repented him of evil, or rather relief him of evil. Turn to me, the Bible says, with your whole heart, not just with part of your heart, but your entire being give me your undivided attention as a teacher within a classroom would call his students to uh, to give him or her their an undivided attention God is saying that you ought to give him your undivided attention trust me that I'm able to bring victory in the midst of crisis Rent your heart and not your garments means that Judah should not only perform outward lament over their present circumstances, their present crisis by using rituals, but in other words, that the heart must trust God. It ought to be an inward surrender. There are times when we 
are met with situations. We are very quick to do old ward, perform old ward rituals, but brothers and sisters, unless our heart is broken, unless we allow God to penetrate our heart, unless we allow God to speak to our hearts, unless we surrender our hearts. It doesn't matter what we do on the outside. It does not matter how many persons have prayed for us unless we have given up our will and surrendered to Jesus. Brothers and sisters, saints of God, listen, understand today, unless we allow God to take full control of our heart, our outward rituals are in vain. In the midst of your crisis, we are to worship. Because verses 15 and 16 says, Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, consecrate the congregation, and assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. In other words, Joel is saying everyone has to come to worship in the midst of crisis. When trouble comes, we need worshipers to worship. Are you with me down there? When problems arise, we need our friends to pray for us. When trials show up, praises should show up. When wars show up, worship should show up. When crises show up, worship should show up. The, there is power in worship. There is power in worship. When the people of God come together like this to praise God, there is power in worship worship there is inspiration in worship there is encouragement in worship there is reconnection with God in worship when trouble comes we need worshipers brothers and sisters there is power in worship acts Jehoshaphat and he will tell you that one day three armies were coming against Judah but God called but Jehoshaphat called worship and as a result of that the three armies were defeated asked Peter in prison and he will tell you that the church prayed for him and the Lord released him asked Paul and Silas when they they were in prison, in prison, in the pri in prison, within the dungeon of the prison. That's where the Bible says that Paul and Silas were. But the Bible says they began to pray. They began to praise. I do not know what the song, what song that they were singing. But brothers and sisters, pray adventure. If they were in this modern world, uh, they probably would sing. My heart can sing when I pause to remember a heartache here is but a stepping stone along the trail that winding always upward this troubled world is not my final home but until then my heart will go on singing until then with joy I carry on until the, until the day my eyes behold a city uh, brothers and sisters sometimes in our deepest uh, crisis uh, what we need is a song a song that inspire us uh, a song what we need is not party what we need uh, is not the things of the world but what we need is a song that says that Jesus is with us, that Jesus has not left us, that Jesus is watching us, that Jesus is our shepherd. Brothers and sisters, worship changes things. If you live long enough, you will know that worship changes things. It changes Hannah 
from a woman of barrenness to a woman of fertility. Worship changes things. It changes the disciples from a position seeking people to united gospel-centered Christians. Worship changes things. It changes the early church from being fearful to be fearless. Worship changes things. In the midst of our crisis, we are called to worship. When God shows up in our worship, when God shows up in our crisis, things happen. The Bible tells us, as we continue to read the book of Joel, the second chapter, verses, verse 18, it says, Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. The word pity is a Hebrew word, hamal, which means to have compassion, to spare his people. When the Lord shows up, your problems get solved. When the Lord shows up, you know that your misery is not your maintenance. You know that your demise is not your destination. When the Lord shows up, you understand that your brokenness is not your break off. When the Lord shows up, you know that your trial is not your trend. This is not what your life is about. When the Lord shows up, you understand that your pain is not your promise. When the Lord shows up, you recognize that your sorrow is not your source. Your failure is not your fortune. When the Lord shows up understand this when the Lord shows up understand this your crisis is your reference not your destination let me say it for those at the back there those 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 who are sitting on the balcony your crisis is your reference it is not your destination a prayer adventure, those at the back, those on my left ha did not hear what I just said. So let me say it again. Your crisis is your reference. It is not your destination. It reminds you of where you're coming from, but that's not where you're going. Your crisis is your circumstance, not your mirror. Your crisis is on earth, not in heaven. Your crisis is temporary, not eternal. Your crisis may get you down, but it does not have to get you out. There are many persons who have quit their studies, quit their dreams and their hopes because... Of their crisis. This evening I'm gonna share with you a little bit about me this evening. Your crisis is there to make you, to build you, to shape your character so that you can deal with the next crisis that is coming. Because as long as you live on this earth, you will have crisis. As long as you're in this world, you will face crisis. Whether you're a student or the president, whether you are a faculty here or you're the president of this country, you will have challenges. You will face crisis. It's a part of life. So it is not whether or not you will face it, it is how to face it. Brothers and sisters, when God shows up, he reverses your circumstance. The Bible tells us in verses 19, 19 25, and 26, the Bible says, Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will what? 
send you corn and wine and oil and he shall be what talk to me brethren he shall be what satisfied therewith and I will be I will what I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen verse 25 says and I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten the conquer worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm my great army which I have sent among you and he shall eat in plenty and be satisfied when God shows up there is a reversal to your circumstance in chapter 1 verse 10 of Joel the Bible tells us that the enemy of Judah has, re has ruined the grain dried up the wine and oil and the oil is no more but I'm so glad that there is another chapter because in chapter 2 verse 9 the Bible says Joel, Joel says God will send corn wine and oil and Judah shall be satisfied in chapter 1 verse 4 Joel describes how the locusts have destroyed Judah's livelihood but in verse in verse 25 of chapter 2 God says I will restore to you what the locusts have eaten what the enemies of Judah have taken in chapter 1 verses 12 and 18 the cattle have no pasture the fig trees have been withered and joy have withered away from the sons of men but I'm so glad that in chapter 2 verse 22 the Bible says that the open pastures are springing up the trees bear its fruit and the fig tree is strengthened God is undoing what Judah's enemies have done and may I just pause parenthetically to say to somebody, you may be going through a crisis now. It may be bad now. It may look gloomy now. But God one day will reverse your crisis. God one day will make a difference. Because when God shows up, there is reversal to your circumstances. Your failures becomes success. Your pain becomes power and strength. Your mountains becomes plains. Your trials becomes testimonies. Your disappointments become appointments. Your brokenness becomes mended. Your sorrow becomes joy. Your failing grades become passing grades. Your genesis become revelation. Your earth becomes heaven. Your life becomes eternal and your mortal body one day will become immortal. When God shows up, he reverses your circumstances. Let me tell you as a, as a close, if it were not for trials, I would not be here, doctor. Madam President, I wouldn't be here if it was not for trials. If it were not for difficulties, I would not be here. I would not have achieved what I have achieved. But I thank God for my trials because my trials caused me to stay longer on my knees so I could know Jesus more and more so in your trials don't give up but keep on going forward rejoice and be glad because God is giving you more than you had when God is undoing your circumstance he does not give you just what you lost. He gives you more than you lost. Uh, that's why verses 23 and 24 says, Be glad then he, children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he had what? Given you the farmer rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the farmer rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the, flow, the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. God does not just 
and do what was done to you, but he gives you more than you have lost. When God shows up, your blessings turn up. Ask Job, and he will tell you, I've lost my livestock, I've lost my children, and even I've lost my health. But when God shows up, Job received more than he lost. Oh, brothers and sisters, when God shows up, God will give you more than you had. God will multiply that will multiply what you had. When God shows up, he will create a path that you have only dreamt of. When God shows up, it will be different. Brothers and sisters, when crisis hits hard, don't be discouraged because God is doing something. When I look in the book of Joel, I see that in the book we can find the Christ event. The Christ event is a death, resurrection, and ascension and second coming of Jesus. In Joel, there is a crisis, a crisis that has eroded the livelihood of Judah, eroded the wealth of Judah. But can I tell you that sin has eroded this world, destroyed the livelihood, separated us from Eden and God. In Joel, Judah needed a savior. They cried for God to help them, to deliver them from their enemies. Can I tell you that sin has caused us to cry for a savior. Sin has placed us in the need of a savior. In Joel, God shows up to deliver Judah, to restore to them that which they have lost. Can I tell you today that one day somebody showed up for us? That one day somebody showed up born of a woman born under the law. Uh, walk the dusty roads of Palestine. One day somebody showed up for us. His name is Jesus. He came to save us from our sins. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Uh, brothers and sisters, one day Jesus walked down the road of Golgotha. One day your Savior and uh, my Savior took uh, a long walk uh, up the road of Golgotha. Somebody says, if you see Jesus on Friday, he's insulted, spot on, and afflicted. On Friday, he's mocked and jeered, slapped and scorned. On Friday, they hang him high and stretch him wide. On Friday, he's crucified and in a tomb. Saturday seems worse than Friday because on Sabbath, he's defeated, he's victimized, his enemies prevail, he has been conquered. And Sabbath, it looked like deception had defeated him. It looked like eternity had terrorized him and death had denied him and dominion had the power to hold him and the devil had destroyed him. And Sabbath, it looked like hell had the power to hold him. But I'm so glad that though Friday was bad and Sabbath was worse and Sunday, he was revived and resurrected. On Sunday, he was alive and animated. On Sunday, he was elevated and exalted. On Sunday, he was magnified, dignified, and glorified. On Sunday, he rose from the grave with all power in his hand. On Sunday, he held the keys of death and life. On Sunday, he rescued the perishing, cared for the dying. Brothers and sisters, I'm so glad that Jesus, Jesus rose from the grave and gave us deliverance because in the book of Joel, God restores Judah far more than what Judah lost when humanity sinned, humanity lost Eden. But I'm so glad to tell somebody that one of these days, our Jesus, our Christ, our Lord will descend the stairways of glory. 
Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, chapter 15, verse 51, Paul says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we we shall be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? One of these days, saints of God, our Savior will come. But notice what happens in Revelation chapter 13. The question is asked, who are these people that are arrayed in white robes? And where did they come from? And John says to the elder, to the angel, you know. And John says, these are they who have gone through great tribulation, but they have washed their robes in the blood of Jesus. And may I submit to you today that it's not just good to have gone through trials, but you got to stop at Calvary and be washed in the blood of Jesus. As my sister sings, I invite you to contemplate that though you are going through your trials, the question is, have you stopped at Calvary? And have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? to build my own life traveled far and wide searching for comfort without your light chasing the pleasures in the world I had built left me broken in my guilt I've come to see that the best for me lies in your embrace. So here I am, Lord, make me anew to live for your glory, your glory alone. You were my strength, my solid ground. You of life in the darkest days when I've gone astray you say my child you're not alone do not be afraid for you are my own now that I'm home where I belong, I know I am restored. Surrounded by your love and wrapped in your grace, I am now embraced. So here I am, Lord, make me anew to live. Do not be afraid. 
God's goodness in your crisis as you contemplate that you are in a crisis the question is do you know the solution of your crisis do you know the one who is able to deliver you from your crisis who is able to carry you through your crisis today as you are standing the greatest friend to have is a Jesus and today if you find yourself in a crisis you are seeking to take hold of the solution to your crisis if that's you today I invite you to walk from where you are and join me at the altar I have two minutes that's all I have two minutes I invite you to join me at the altar you're in a crisis but today you want to be prayed for special especially you want to take hold of Christ's hands the greatest solution whatever your crisis is I know somebody who knows how to deliver you I invite you I invite you to walk from your seat and join me right here at the altar I'm gonna ask your president to pray that special prayer for those who have walked I will also invite a chaplain to hand to you a piece of paper in which you can write your name so that we can follow up with you as we go through this week of prayer. You're in a crisis this morning. I have 30 seconds. That's all I have. But you want to take hold of the hands of Almighty God for he alone knows your struggles when your roommates do not know your struggles you know your own struggles you know what bothers you you know what gets you angry you know what worries you but we are reminded that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot cure. I invite uh, our president to join us to pray that special prayer. Our university president. As she's coming, is there another person? Is there one more who want to join us? Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Shall we kneel to pray? Our Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, because you are our God and there is no one else we can go to. Today, you have seen our young people. They have signified, oh God, that they are in a crisis. Oh Lord, the truth is we are all in a crisis. For some, Lord, the burdens that we face are very heavy to bear. Oh God, I pray that our young people will know you and they will know you in a deep personal way so that Lord, even while they are beset with trials, with temptations, and as 
we studied this morning the experiences, O oh Lord, of your people. They were attacked on every side. But Lord, you have also shown to us that during the time of crisis of your people in the past, you were there. You promised. You came and you delivered them. And you promised them, Lord, abundance. The crisis that we are facing, especially of these young people who have come to the front to declare and to show to you, O oh God, that they need you. This crisis, O oh Lord, may be in different forms. O oh God, I pray that you please let them feel that you are very near. May they feel, O oh Lord, your warm embrace. For it is true that when we are afraid, you are there. When we lack financial support, you are there. When we need wisdom, you are there. When we are tempted by the wiles of the enemy, you are there. You are only a call away, O oh God. So Lord, I just pray that our young people will see you, will hear you. I pray, Lord, that during their stay here in our university, they will encounter you. And these encounters, Lord, will strengthen them, will equip them so that as they journey through life, they will be strong. And as you said to Peter, I have prayed for you, and when you are transformed and strengthened, strengthen your brothers and sisters as well. This is the desire of our hearts as shepherds of this university, that our young people, Lord, will meet you just as Peter met you, will be transformed by your transforming power. And Lord, put in their hearts that when they meet you and are transformed by you, Lord, they will also have the burden to strengthen others. Thank you so much, O oh God, that you have brought these young people to our university. Thank you that you will show yourself to them. O oh Lord, thank you that now you are a reality in each of our lives. Loving Father, forgive us. Forgive our unbelief. And as we rise, O oh God, make us new persons who are willing to take this new walk with you, who will come to you and accept your loving embrace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. See you this afternoon where we'll be looking at the topic, Don't Bury My Child. God bless you. Have a great day. So Do not be afraid for you.